All right, so good job. You found lesson 3B, so go ahead and uh, we'll finish. This is the second half of lesson three. So go ahead and begin watching and taking your notes right now. Chemically, saliva is 99.5% water. So basically your saliva is almost all water. Only half of a percent are solutes, stuff that is dissolved in a solution. So in this case, the solution of saliva is 99.5% water, and the remaining half percent are the salts, dissolved gases, various organic substances, and enzymes that are in your saliva. Salivation is entirely under nervous control. All right, this comes into uh, why we salivate. Um, is, I'm sure any of you that had psychology, he's talked about uh, Pavlov and his dogs, where he uh, was able to get his dogs to salivate or drool just by ringing a bell. I'm sure this is, uh, again, if, you've been, if you're in psychology, you probably talked about that. Uh, the dogs associated the ringing of the bell with being fed, and they started to salivate. So a lot of times when we see or smell or even think about food, we start to salivate. And again, that's all under uh, nervous, our nervous control of our nervous system. Now let's talk about our teeth. There are uh, different teeth that we have in our mouth. Our teeth have different shapes. That's one of the unique things about mammals. Uh, if we were in class, this would be the point I would walk over to my desk and grab my alligator skull and point out that all of the teeth in its mouth are all exactly the same shape. They may be different sizes, but they're all the same shape. Mammals, on the other hand, and this is when I would put down my alligator skull and pick up my bear skull and open it up and show the teeth that inside of the bear skull, there are some pointy teeth and some flat teeth. So mammals have teeth of different shape, and we are no exception. There are three parts to your tooth. The part that sticks up outside of the gum line is known as the crown. The part of the tooth that is embedded within the gum line is the neck. And then the part of the tooth that is embedded within the bone, within either the mandible or the maxilla bone, is called the root. So three parts of the tooth are crown, neck, and the root. Okay. Uh, by definition, the teeth, or sometimes called the dentes, project into the mouth and are adapted for mechanical digestion. So that means they're designed to grind up your food. Uh, a typical tooth consists, again, of the three principal portions, the crown, the neck, and the root. There are two dentitions, or sets of teeth, that a human being will have in their lifetime. We commonly refer to the first set as baby teeth. Uh, but they're also known as deciduous teeth because we lose them the same way a deciduous tree will lose its leaves in the fall. You will lose those first set of teeth. They're also referred to sometimes as primary teeth, and in some places you'll see them commonly referred to as milk teeth. Uh, and again, baby teeth is another is, is what is typically uh, those teeth are typically referred to as. And then they, those teeth are replaced by your permanent or sometimes called adult teeth, and they're also known as your secondary teeth. And those are supposed to last you for the rest of your adult life. There are four different kinds of teeth that you find in your mouth. Again, we're mammals, so our teeth uh, will occur in different shapes. We have the incisors that are up front. We use those to cut food. Our cuspids or canines are used to tear or shred food. Uh, you know, your, your meat eaters have your cuspids and, kind, and canines. Premolars or bicuspids are absent in deciduous or baby teeth and are used for crushing and grinding food. And then the ones at the very back are called the molars and they're also used for crushing and grinding food, and those are probably used the most. So if we look at uh, where we find these teeth, the incisors, okay, there's your ones up front, and typically as children, 
the these are going to be the first ones that we lose as as we grow and we start to lose our teeth the cuspids or canines are going to be right there next to them so those are going to be uh in humans they're not that long uh and in, in other meat eating uh or omnivorous mammals um but ours are pointy but just not very long uh, the premolars or bicuspids are found uh, in between here, and then the molars are in the back. And some of you um, may have had what we call the uh, your extra set of molars, you know, your wisdom teeth, especially if you've had braces, you probably had, have had them removed. And they are to replace your oldest set of molars as you wear them out. Um, you know, we used to, our ancestors didn't go to the dentist and they used, we used our teeth for a tool and we chewed a lot. And so these teeth would wear out. And as they would wear out, we would lose them. And then in early adulthood, the, the uh, wisdom teeth would come in and replace those molars that were worn out. But today, um, you know, our, our, dental care is uh, good enough to the point where we don't need really to use those uh, wisdom teeth anymore. We don't wear our molars out. They're able to last us our, our whole life because we care for them. And we eat cooked and prepared food, which is much softer and easier to chew. So that's one of the reasons why many of us will have our uh, wisdom teeth removed. Okay. So these are this, obviously your upper jaw. This is where they will be anchored and oriented in your maxilla bone. And then these down here are uh, in the mandible down in the lower jaw. All right. So through mastication or chewing. All right. So mastication is another name for chewing. And if you remember from the mus muscular system, that large muscle on your jaw it's attached to your mandible called the masseter muscle. It's called that because it helps you masticate your food. So chewing food is, the definition is food is mixed with saliva and shaped into a bolus. So there's that word I mentioned earlier. A bolus is a mouthful of food that you are able to swallow. And when it's all ground up and mixed with saliva, it is easily swallowed. The enzyme salivary amylase, and remember I said anytime you see a word that ends in ace, it's going to be an enzyme. Uh, the enzyme salivary amylase converts polysaccharides or starches into disaccharides. So you go from many to two disaccharides, maltose, which is a sugar. Anything that ends in os, it's going to be a sugar. This is the only chemical digestion that occurs in the mouth, and that's it. So your mouth as I said earlier, when we started talking about saliva, very, very little chemical digestion takes place in the mouth. It's all primarily designed there for mechanical digestion. Grind the food up, mix it with saliva, which again is only uh, 0.5 percent uh, of saliva is anything but water. 99.5% of saliva is all water. So you're really just mixing it with water so that you can easily swallow it. You don't want to swallow dry food. It's hard on the esophagus. So you want to grind it up, mix it up with saliva and form that lovely food bolus and then send it on down the pipe. Okay. So, all right, this is going to conclude lesson three. So just as before, um, Take this information, hopefully you took very good and detailed notes. So take this information and head on to Schoology and find the exit slip for lesson three on the digestive system and uh, use that information to answer those questions, All right? Again, if you have any questions, shoot me an email and don't forget, hopefully by this time, we have established when my office hours will be and please feel free to log in and we can chat there online. So thanks for watching and We'll see you tomorrow.